Now for our story. Kit Mead had arisen early this morning in the house at Malibu Beach, had gone into Los Angeles on a very important errand. When Paul Cromwell had first told Kit about the difficulties in her way in regard to legally adopting Lisa Fenner's baby, Kit had said confidently that she wouldn't give up, that she'd manage somehow. She'd been quite sure of herself, too, when they'd talked in the car on the way to bring Lisa and the baby back from the hospital. The time was getting short now. If it hadn't been for the accident, Kit's baby would have been due almost any day. And now she had to act quickly if she were to carry through her plan, if she were to return to Wakefield with Lisa Fenner's baby as if it were her own. Yes, Kit had been feeling quite confident when she left in the morning with a list of lawyers' names in a smart bag. But everywhere she met with discouragement, with negative answers. According to law, Mrs. Mead, your husband must sign the adoption papers. And Mrs. Fenner's husband must give his consent. There is no other way to do it legally. Has Mrs. Fenner sold uh, custody of the child? It's the law, Mrs. Mead. Unfortunately, it's not possible. No other way in this state. Not in this state. Not in this state. Not in this state. Kit was exhausted, discouraged. As she sat in the lobby of the hotel where Max, Paul's chauffeur, was to meet her for the trip back to Malibu, she was oblivious to the bustle around her. She was reviewing the events of the last week, thinking of her marriage, of Bill. Everything would have been all right from the beginning if it hadn't been for that Peggy Douglas and the silly excitement about her letter. Bill would never have wanted to leave if it hadn't been for that. If I'd had the child, everything would have been different. I know it would. He'd forget all about Peggy then. Bill would love to have a child. He's always wanted one. He was happy with me in the beginning. He would be again. If I weren't so sure of that, I'd have given up a long time ago. But I'm right. I'm sure of it. That's why I've got to have Lisa's baby. Because of Bill. Being with Bill... It's the only thing that's ever mattered to me. I won't give up now. I'll win out somehow. I must. Max had come into the hotel lobby then. He spoke to Kit twice before she heard him. She hardly noticed the ride back to the beach. She'd been so lost in her thoughts. Now as she comes into the living room, Paul Cromwell looks up. Hello, Kit. Oh, hello, Paul. Oh, where's Mrs. Kingsley? Upstairs the baby. Oh, I'll go up and see. Uh, would you like to come up, Paul? I've no idea she's feeding him. At any rate, there's a lot of racket up there. Everything's quieted down now, though. Isn't there some rule about not disturbing them while they're being fed? Well, it's all right if you're quiet, I think. Naturally, the books don't recommend a lot of confusion at that time. Well, I didn't know. Oh, he's so darling, Paul. This morning I put out a finger and he clutched it with his little hand, hung on for dear life. I believe that merely represents an instinctive uh, reflex action. Or has it something to do with hanging from trees as per our ancestors? Oh, Paul, you should be ashamed of yourself. You're just an irresponsible bachelor. Of course, yours is a much simpler life. I confess I'm very discouraged about the way things went in town today. I intended to ask you about that when you first came in. What did you find out? Well, I went everywhere, just everywhere. And everyone had the same answer. It can't be done in the state without the consent of both husbands. Can't be done. Impossible. Over and over. The same thing. Well, I warned you, Kit. After all, there's a perfectly logical reason. The law merely wants to protect you and to protect the child. In the old days... Yes, I know. In the old days, it was all perfectly simple. I only wish all this were happening 15 years ago. There would have been no problem at all. Perhaps not at the time. All sorts of things might have come up later. No assurance at all that you could keep the child. I've heard of such cases. Tragic sometimes. I suppose you're right. There's a good reason for the law. But in this case, I can't afford to give up. So I've got to think of some other way. But, Kit, there isn't any other way. Why don't you face it? Why do you insist on following through when you know it's impossible? Because I'm not convinced that it is impossible. Well, if you want to kid yourself... I'm not kidding myself. I'm simply not accustomed to being defeated. And I don't intend to be this time. I'm not going to give up. Somehow I'm going to have that baby. I'm not so sure of that, Kit. I've been wondering. Well, what is it? Oh, never mind. Paul, 
I'm much too tired today to coax something out of you. For heaven's sake, say what's on your mind. Very well, kid, I will. It's about the child. The child? What do you mean? It's always seemed a little odd to me. I've wondered, well, just why you were so determined to get possession of Lisa's baby. But, Paul, I can't believe you're serious. Why shouldn't I be serious? I simply... Do you mean to say that after all the times we've been over this thing, you still don't understand why I want the baby? Oh, I've asked you plenty of times. But somehow, I've never been quite satisfied with your answers. And what was wrong with my answers? They seemed rather vague. Of course, you kept pointing out that it would help me. Well, wouldn't it? Aren't you in a pretty bad spot at present? Perhaps. Nevertheless, it seemed peculiar, all your concern. Just for that. What a short memory you have. You seem to have forgotten how upset you were originally. Until I became involved in your little amour and tried to straighten it out for you. No, I haven't forgotten. Not at all. But frankly, Kit, it seems not quite in character. Your being so worried about my welfare. I felt there must be some other reason. But of course there's another reason. In fact, several. But we've been over it all so many times. I've told you I have some things to settle in Wakefield. A, a question of family pride and so on. Or doesn't that strike you as sufficient? The fact that one might worry about one's position in a community. No, I suppose it wouldn't. With your complacent Philadelphia background, such a realistic problem wouldn't mean much to you. There's no need to be sarcastic, Kit. I'm only anxious to get at the truth. And I don't think I have. Not yet. Paul... I've never deceived you about the truth. I've been quite honest with you from the beginning. Have you, Kit? Yes, of course. I've told you I wanted a child. And I do. Very much. And the reasons you've given are the only ones? Just the fact that you've some idea in your head about proving something in Wakefield? All that sort of thing? Certainly those are my reasons. Look, Paul, you're still hedging. I wish you'd tell me what's bothering you. I suppose I'm being pretty much of a fool. <laughs> well, I can't even give you an opinion as to that if you don't give me something to go on. Well, the fact is, Kit, when I was talking to Lisa yesterday, I had quite a bit of a shock. A shock? In what way? From something Lisa said. About you, Bill Mead. And just what did Lisa tell you? Lisa seemed to think your chief reason for wanting her baby was to patch up your marriage with Mead. Lisa told you that? Yes. She said you'd told her how important it was to you, how much Bill had wanted a child, that you were sure it would make a success of your marriage. Frankly, it quite floored me. Why did you lie to me, Kit? Lie to you, Paul? So, this is what you've been leading up to. Sometimes, Paul, I think you're unbelievably naive. Either that or just plain muddle-headed. I don't see why you say that, Kit. Look at it from my standpoint. We've had plans. We've discussed a future together. Granted. Then, along comes Lisa with a story about your great love for me. How all you want is to be reunited with him. You and Bill. And Lisa's baby. Oh, what a lot of faith you have in me, Paul. Lisa babbles some incoherent story and you're... You're immediately plunged into gloom, full of doubt. You haven't answered my question, Kit. Was Lisa telling the truth? Are you planning to go back to Bill and restore your marriage? Paul Cromwell looked straight into Kit's eyes. But Kit's face gave him no clue. She returned his penetrating look calmly. Her expression deliberately noncommittal. Actually, Kit was experiencing a moment of panic. Was she in danger of losing the child after all? Even if she could think of some way out of the legal difficulties? For if Paul became difficult, refused to follow through in regard to Lisa, all Kit's careful planning would be useless. 